The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Connecting this to an IC705, which I've just been and got, as you can see, is not very difficult at all. Except you need one of these. <laughs> you need a micro USB to micro USB lead. You can have it a bit longer than this. I stupidly bought the shortest one, not realizing I'd done that. Just watch when you select these, or if you get them from Amazon, uh, make sure you select one with a reasonable length. But it doesn't matter, it's, it's kind of long enough. Um, and insert one end of this into the uh, USB, micro USB socket on the 705. The other end of this into the micro USB socket on the Pi. And other than power, which uh, you will have to use uh, 5 volts or something from somewhere in here, um, I've got a 5 volt supply in my portable outfit, so I simply plug another lead into that, and you're done. Um, that then gives you IC705 connected to Pi, and then you can do the necessary uh, run the headless um, operation. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to do that shortly. Uh, I'll demonstrate how to connect all of that up in the next sequence. Okay, there we have the VNC now logged into the Pi. Um, I'm, I'm just using a Mac here for screen capture, but uh, a Mac or a PC, it doesn't really matter, whatever you've got to kind of get things set up initially. The, um, the, the Pi on the new operating system has a few quirks that uh, are worth just running through. Um, one of them is setting the resolution of your um, VNC, if you like, virtual desktop. So if we go to Raspberry Pi configuration, the setting for this has changed location. It, it's now under this Raspberry Pi configuration, and if you look at the bars at the, the bar at the top here, surprise, surprise, it's under display, and headless resolution 1920 by 1080 is where I normally set it. So that's set the resolution, and then we can go in and uh, run the different uh, applications. I'll just run up FL Rig. Uh, we are logged on to the Pi. Um, and now we'll have a look at, uh, at another application. We'll look at uh, JS8 Call. JS8 Call is, a, is another really interesting application um, for low-speed data communications. It tends to be uh, less well used uh, than WSJTX on FT8, for example, um, but is, is really useful for keeping in contact with uh, Stations that you, you work quite often. Takes a while to load. Okay, there we are. It's now loaded. Um, I'll reselect the frequency. It runs on a different set of frequencies. 40 meters is 7.078 megahertz. Um, and we it's got a waterfall here. As you move your cursor, uh, you alter the frequency of your transmit receive. Um, and if we now wait a little while, we might see some activity, but it's, what is it, it's, it's 15.38 in the afternoon here in the UK, so I doubt we're going to find too many people there. But I can put out a heartbeat, this uh, left-hand side here, send a heartbeat message, that basically says, can anybody hear me? So if I send out a heartbeat message, uh, which I've just done, um, it's sending, it'll send it for <coughs> 14 seconds, 15 seconds. Uh, it's still sending it, and we'll see. Um, it's completed the send now pretty much, and we'll see if anybody comes back to the heartbeat. You would then at least know uh, where you are. Um, although, stupidly, I, I put that rather high in the band. Normally you would send a heartbeat message out, uh, you know, 800 hertz, something like that, but we'll see. There we go.
somebody has come back to me and said, yeah, we've got you, plus 18. So that's pretty good. Um, F41, F4IOG. So France heard me, um, plus 9, uh, and, and he's plus 18. So there we go. So 1, oh, signal noise ratio, plus 18. So that's me. Uh, he heard me with the 10 watts. So you at least know that everything is working. Uh, and I tend to leave the rig connected to uh, JS8 call when I'm here in the shack. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. <clears throat> it's not as frenetic as uh, WSJTX and FT8, but uh, again, is a really useful communications mechanism. That's probably about it, other than I was going to show you how to look at uh, overclocking the Raspberry Pi, which, which is not terribly difficult, um, if I can remember how to do it myself. So, um, pull up a, a prompt and um, type sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot txt hit the return oh what did i do wrong there no nano i haven't spelt nano correctly try again s u t o n a n o forward uh, forward slash forward slash boot forward slash config dot txt and there we go let me just open that up make that a bit larger so you can see it a bit more detail and um, you, you'll get to see what's written in here. Okay, um, the rules of this uh, device is that if you have a uh, if you have a comment and you put a hash at the front of it that means that's not executable that's simply information. So as you can see most of this is information until you get down to this one. This is one I added, uh, which is HDMI underscore force underscore hot plug, one word, equals one. I had a bit of problems <coughs> with the Pi to start with, where it was continually looking for an HDMI screen to be connected. And I discovered that this particular expression really does force the thing to ignore you basically are kidding the thing that there's a, a screen connected. It makes life a lot easier. So that's that's one little comment that uh, that you can put on. If we carry on down here, um, this is the this is the overclock that I've got, um, and it's literally the A R M underscore freq frequency F R E Q equals one thousand. That's it. You, you can do an over-voltage um, comment uh, immediately underneath that. I haven't bothered with that. I'm only clocking it at uh, 1 gig. And if you look at Conkey on the right-hand side, you can see it's running at 1 gig at the moment. <coughs> I've run it quite successfully up to 1200, and, and I think you can even run it faster than that. But I'm after reliability more than I'm after speed. As you can see from the CPU usage, uh, which is around 33-34%, at the moment, um, it, it, the CPU, the four cores in the CPU seem to cope extremely well uh, with everything. So that's, the, uh, that's probably the only other thing that you need to worry about uh, in terms of um, comments in the config. And then I'm not going to save this one because I've kind of done it before, but uh, you, you simply save it all. Um, I'm just going to exit. So control X to exit, uh, because I didn't do any changes. Um, no, that's fine. I'll just get out of this now. Um, and, and there's an introduction to running uh, the Raspberry Pi with Builder Pi on a 02W controlling an IC705 or an IC703 or probably any of the new Yesu rigs or really any rig that's got inbuilt sound card and uh, USB to serial built in um, because you've got all of those that you can select directly from the Pi. Brilliant piece of kit and uh, <laughs> I, I highly recommend it.
I highly recommend it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I hope you have a great day. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.